Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, if you are afraid to order wine at a restaurant because you really don't know what you're talking about, you're going to want to watch this next show. I'm going to call it Wine 101 with a Real Expert. That's next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I have to admit, I'm a dummy when it comes to wine. I even went to Napa. My wife, Victoria, got, gave me a, a trip to Napa for my 50th birthday and uh, sipped a lot of wine, enjoyed a lot of wine. Can't remember anything from the experience. Maybe it's because I had too much to drink, but who knows? To talk about that today, uh, Tony Pacararo. He is a uh, wine connoisseur, and he is the wine director at Los Colinas and Glen Eagles Country Clubs, and a good friend. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay. If, do you run into a lot of guys like me who, like, they, they, they give, give you this blank look when you say, well, what do you want to drink? And they, they like, red or white? Absolutely. You know, in, in today's age of technology, there's so many thousands of different wines out there. It's just very hard to kind of navigate through the process, especially if you're not sure what the grape variety may be. You don't know how to pronounce the wine. You know, here in, in, in Texas, we tend to drink Chardonnay, Cabernet, Pinot Noir, Sauvignon Blanc. But what we don't look at are the wines from Europe. These guys have been making wines for five, six hundred years. They're kind of put the wines on the map. And if you're at a grocery store and if you're at that wine list, it's it's always safe to order the California Chardonnay and Cabernet and Pinot Noir. And I always say, you know, let's get you out of your comfort zone. Let's get you drinking wines that you may never even remotely think about ordering on a wine list. So, you know, how do we jumpstart the process? So sure. uh, first off, there is no wrong when it comes to wine. Everybody's entitled to their own taste profiles. We tend to get caught up with all the, the latest fads and wines, but at the end of the day, if you like red, you like red. If you like white, you like white. My wife only drinks New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs and champagnes and sparkling wines. There is nothing wrong with that. I tend to like high acid white wines a little bit better than some of the big rich uh, buttery Chardonnays. So at the end of the day, it's what you like. I have a lot of the members that'll say, Tony, what do you suggest? Well, it's not about what Tony likes. It's what about you like? And we ask questions. So if you're at a retail store, or if you're at a, the restaurant, I would normally say, you know, if you're asking for what kind of Chardonnays do you have? Ultimately, I'm going to say, do you like them big, rich, and buttery? Do you like them at high acid, a little bit of stainless steel? And then we're going to kind of go from there. Uh, if you're buying retail and you're looking to learn about wine, uh, most of the fine wine shops will have uh, education classes on property. So that's always good to kind of go in sure. and uh, take some classes. You can take classes online, which, of course, I have done. I know a lot of people have done it. But realistically, the easiest way to do it is practical experience. And I've always encouraged uh, members to go to their local wine shop, say, I want to spend $250, $300 on a case of assorted wines, whether it be red, white, mixed, go home and taste through those wines. Take meticulous notes of what you like, more importantly, what you don't like. So when you go back to that wine shop, you'll hand off your list of what you tasted, and now your wine purveyor is gonna dial in on what you like. So the goal is to get you from here to here with your next case of wine. At this point, we're figuring out what you like and don't like, and then we're gonna buy you another case of wine, and now we're really gonna start dialing in on what your flavor profiles are. So are you a big red guy, or do you like soft and fruity? Do we like old world wines or new world wines? So there's there's always these, these opportunities to try. All the wines are good, they just may not be what you particularly like, and that's okay. Again, don't worry about what everybody else says. 
drink what you like to drink. And you have the uh, the privilege and honor of working at two of the finest clubs in Absolutely. North Texas, uh, both Las Colinas and Glen Eagles, where Victoria and I are members. We've got some pictures that I want to pull up and just, you, you guys always seem to have some kind of tasting event going on at both clubs, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, it gets back to practical tasting as to what I like. It's, it's kind of like driving or buying a new car. Try before you buy. We do a lot of these tastings so members can walk around and taste 30 or 40 different wines from around the world. We have an opportunity for them to purchase the wines that they get to taste. And it's, uh, it's, it's a like commonality between food and wine and everybody at the club kind of enjoys this kind of light lifestyle and atmosphere. This must be the best gig ever. I mean, when you tell people that you're a wine director and you get to drink wine for a living, I mean, do they say, how do I get this gig? Yeah. I mean, at, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, it is a job, but it's a, it's a fun job. I've been doing it for a very long time. And uh, I've been very fortunate to have traveled around the world, learning a little bit about the practical, practical experiences of all these countries that we get to taste. But at the end of the day, it is, uh, it's a fun lifestyle. Absolutely. We've got some video of just people um, drinking wine and tasting wine. And and, and I've got a question for you, Tony. Does the more expensive the bottle mean the better the wine? Not necessarily. Uh, one of the things that I definitely look for are wines that over deliver. I mean, uh, there are reasons why wines are $100, $150, $200 a bottle. Um, it could be the Oak Regiment, it could be production, it could be the name. But at the end of the day, we're looking for wines that you can drink on an everyday basis. And Argentinian Melbecs and, and certain wines from uh, uh, Europe, whether it be France or Italy, that you can buy for $25, $25 a bottle. I call them pizza and, and hamburger wines. Now, if you want to move into the $200 and $300 bottles of wine, that's that you know those wines are beautiful, but they're not necessarily practical for everyday entertaining and things like that. It's, it's kind of like you know uh, buying a car. You know you can buy a Mercedes and you know what you're getting here. Or you can buy something less expensive. It's still a car, just like Cabernet is still Cabernet, sure. but depending on the terroir, the production value, the name, all these things kind of kind of equate to why a wine is more expensive than something sure. else. So when we do the pop-up tastings, I always try to keep the wines uh, under $25. So you can feel good about buying bottles over and over again and not have to feel like you have to wait for a special occasion to drink that 80 to $200 bottle of wine. Sure, and I know that there's a, a competition between different places. You know, the French think that they have the best wine, the mm -hmm. Italians think they have the best wine, a lot of uh, growers in California think they do, and and Texas is actually coming along and with getting some respect in the uh, wine world, isn't a it? Absolutely, you know, early on I think Texas planted uh, grapes that we all drank, Chardonnay, Cabernet, and Pinot Noir, but what we found out was those grapes were not necessarily conducive to that part of the world. So they started planting Mediterranean varietals, whether it be Sangiovese, Tempranillo, Barbera, Viognier, and uh, Vernaccia. So those wines ideally fit that part of the world, whether it be the High Plains or Fort Stockton. So Texas is uh, definitely coming around. Well, we can't talk about wine without sampling some wine. So if uh, Lauren Hanna, our uh, director of first impressions, would be so kind, uh, she's brought a couple of glasses. And I want you to tell us, Tony, what we're going to be drinking. Right now, we're going to taste the 2016 Burgess Cabernet out of uh, Napa Valley. Uh, beautiful wine. What I like about this is it, it does have a little bit of bottle age. You know, most of the Cabernets coming out of Napa Valley right now are vintage 2019, 2020. So rarely do we have an opportunity to find older bottles of California Cabernet. And, and that's what I'm looking for when we start building wine list is to find a couple bottles that do show that California cabs and even California Chardonnays have ageability just like the French and the Italian sure. and everything else. Okay, so uh, with a red wine, you want to swirl it to kind of it. open it up? We want to open up. You have to remember the, the bottle's been, you know, corked, so you, we want to release all the, the flavors and the phenolics. So we mix it with a little bit of oxygen and starts releasing these uh, oak and fruit flavors. And I see sometimes in, in the movies, you know, oh, it has nice legs. I mean, is that is that just somebody being a snob? Is there such no, a thing I mean, as wine those, legs? Those are the glycerins, uh, yeah. the sheeting action that runs down the side of the glass. So normally if we're tasting blind and it's a thin sheet that runs down fairly quickly, it's probably a, a lesser 
type made wine, but if it's a thicker sheeting action that kind of gently goes down the side of the glass, mm -hmm. it's a it's a it's a better way. Uh, okay. Made wine, and so. then do we nose the wine? Is that is that? We'll, a, we'll, a, we'll taste it. We want to yeah. see what kind of flavors are we initially uh, picking up. You know, we're, are we looking for fruit fla flavor flavors, berries, oak, vanilla, all these uh, these flavor components and. When we talk about wine, it's sometimes my job to throw certain uh, descriptors out there, and it's up to you to kind of remember what uh, your grandmother's cedar chest smells like, or if your grandfather smoked a pipe, and I say, think about what a cedar chest smells like, or or pipe smells like, and you start picking up these flavors. Mm. Uh, within the New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, I'll say, look for herbaceousness, you know, uh, asparagus or green bean. You start thinking about what fresh cut hay smells like. All of a sudden, you're invoking these memories, but you're also kind of extracting flavors uh, from the wine. Cheers. Salute. Thank you. Okay. So what should I be tasting? Um, you're going to be tasting black fruit initially. Uh, I think you're going to get a little bit of tobacco. You're going to get some, a little bit of that vanilla and a little bit of that sweet oak. Yes. Since it does have some barrel age to it, the tannins have softened up greatly. So the longer we age the wine, the softer those tannins have gotten. This is 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Wow. Uh, lots of times we could blend back uh, percentage up to 25% of Merlot, Petit Syrah, Cabernet Franc. But this being 100% Cabernet, it, it, it's... Drinking extremely well has that extra bottle age what we need to kind of soften right. up a little bit. So even as we're consuming this, it's, it's continuing to open up and change? Absolutely. As If we come back an hour from now, the wine will be completely different. If we started adding uh, a little bit of food to it, you mm -hmm. know, again, the wines change completely. We'll do food and wine pairings where I'll say, let's taste the wine by itself. And then let's add a little bit of protein or a little bit of a dessert to different wines. And then you'll, you'll see that uh, it has completely changed. The, this is the, the European model with wine and food. We don't necessarily live like this because we sure. drink a lot of iced tea and Coca-Cola. But in Europe, we all know that when you're sitting down for lunch or dinner, you're always gonna have a glass of wine with the meal. Okay, so uh, you're on the patio of either Glen Eagles or Las Colinas with your beautiful bride. Uh, what's your go-to? What would you What would you drink if you wanted to just have, uh, have a romantic evening with probably your Probably champagne. No. There we go. I mean, yeah. we, uh, we, we've we loved Champagne. I've had a chance to visit uh, the Champagne region a couple of times. Uh, it's just an easy, it's a great way to start and end an evening. I think Champagne and sparkling wine doesn't quite get the pub, uh, right. uh, except for Valentine's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, and things like that, New Year's Eve. But it, there's nothing wrong with starting the meal off with a glass of, of bubbly because it kind of... Uh, uh, eases the palate into it. It kind of livens up the palate for your for your dinner. Sure. And at the end of the meal, there's nothing better than ending that meal with a nice glass of sparkling. Wow. So. Okay. So give me one line that I can say that will impress people. Like uh, if, if if I'm smelling this wine or tasting this wine, what could I say that makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about? Um, I would say uh, ripe fruit of black and red fruit flavors with uh, soft uh, vanilla and oak tannins. Yes, and I think it was a very rainy season is yeah, what I'm, okay, I'm yeah. picking up. <laughs> Sun was setting on the west side. West of side, yeah. <laughs> I didn't learn anything, did I, Tony? No, not really. <laughs> okay. We're going to end but with... But again, do you like it? It's all I love that, it. But again, that's all that matters at the end okay. of the day. Hey, cheers. You, Salud. You've been an Thank amazing you. guest. We're going to end with the website, which is invitedclubs.com, and you can navigate to either Glen Eagles or Las Colinas. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.